Hi, good morning, and welcome to worship on our new page, Glendale Heights UMC Worship. Um, my name is John Chugrad. I serve as the pastor here at Glendale Heights United Methodist Church in Durham. And this morning, since we're on a new um, page, we are going to give people a few minutes to sign on. I'm going to try to also start um, a watch party on our personal page so that people can see, um, see have as much access as possible. So um, we appreciate your patience as we try out this new page and we welcome you again to worship. Okay, so I think I have the watch party going on our personal page. We will also post this to YouTube afterwards, and, um, but we're hoping from now on to be on this Glendale Heights UMC worship business page, and that's gonna help us be more accessible to more people and also to be able to track and follow up with who's watching and, and to be in touch, to be a virtual community worshiping online um, as we move forward during this time where we can't gather in person, but also uh, when we can gather in person, and we hope that we, um, if you have been tuning in with us these last couple weeks online, will continue to do so. Maybe you aren't a resident of Durham, um, or you... Uh, you live somewhere else and you've been um, tuning in with us, we invite you to continue to do that as we move forward. And if you've been watching with us and you live in Durham, um, we invite you when we can come back to be in person together to, um, to join us. We want you to be a part of this uh, church family and um, maybe you've been a part of the church in the past and um, haven't been in a while, you are welcome uh, to come home and if you um, are new to our stream and you found us online and you live in Durham, uh, you are welcome here as well to worship with us, um, either online or in person. We encourage you to do so. So as we continue um, to have people log on, again, welcome to Glendale Heights United Methodist Church. My name is John. I serve as a pastor here. I am joined this morning by Amy Davis, our organist and choir director, and um, as people come into the feed, hear this instrumental prelude and um, begin to um, quiet your heart and meditate on um, who we're here to worship. And that's the risen Jesus this second Sunday of Easter.
since the prelude started. Welcome to worship on uh, our new business page, Glendale Heights UMC Worship. We are going to transition to this page moving forward. And so we welcome you to this time of worship. My name is John Shugart. I serve as the pastor here at Glendale Heights United Methodist Church in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, if you can hear me, go ahead and hit the like button and greet one another, pass the peace, um, comment in the comment section, maybe where you're watching from, um, and, and that way we'll know that you are here and watching with us. This morning, um, we hope that this next 30 minutes or so will be a blessing for you from wherever you're watching. Um, we're going to uh, sing a couple hymns where we'll reflect on scripture and we will pray together. Uh, so at this time, um, if you would join me in singing the day of resurrection, and I will post the lyrics to that hymn in the comments section this morning. So this morning, we would invite you at this time to share your prayer requests in, um, in the comments section, and we will, um, I'll read those this morning to our group, and then we'll have a time of prayer um, as a congregation. So if you want to share celebrations, good things that happened this week, as well as concerns, things that we need to know about, and how we can be praying for you in the comments section, we'll do that, and Amy's going to play uh, some special music for us this morning.
Thanks, Amy. Um, Amy and I have really enjoyed being the two um, essential workers here at Glendale Heights on Sunday mornings together, and I'm thankful that she continues to provide us with, um, with great music as she does every week. So thank you, Amy. Um, so at this time, let's, uh, let's spend some time in prayer. Um, I see in our feed um, Elaine shugart Sinet, who is a family of mine, uh, in West Virginia, or no, I'm sorry, Tennessee. Uh, she's got a CAT scan um, and uh, has was diagnosed with cancer in um, 2017, but uh, we want to pray for her CAT scan this week. Um, also, um, we lift up this week. We've been praying for Tom's cousin, uh, Bill, and unfortunately this week, uh, Bill passed away um, he was uh, dealing with cancer and also um, had uh, the coronavirus, and so he, um, he passed away this week. So we um, hold the Warners in our prayers this week and their family and Bill's family, um, and uh, we just extend um, our heartfelt condolences to you all this morning. Uh, David Waddell shared with me that his niece Chloe is having some ongoing health uh, concerns as well, so we lift up Chloe this morning and the Waddell family and extended family. Um, also this morning, um, we want to pray for all of the people who have had um, things postponed or canceled due to um, this new normal that we're living in with stay-at-home orders and quarantine and things like that. Um, things like weddings and senior year sports and concerts and um, proms and things like that. Uh, we know that um, this, this course of action is what we as a community have to do to love one another and to keep people safe and um, flatten the curve and, and those things, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't make those things less disappointing and less sad, so we, um, we lift all of those things up this morning. We also pray this morning for small business owners and those who are out of work and have had their livelihood disrupted by this um, virus. And um, we just pray that, um, that your needs would be provided for, that people, um, people would continue to sp support small businesses in, in what ways that they can. Um, and for those who are out of work, we pray that, um, that you wouldn't feel alone, that, um, that you would... Uh, you would have a community that will support you through this difficult time. We also continue to pray for those essential workers, the um, truck drivers and grocery store workers and delivery people and mail workers, all of the people who have kept things going and are working during this time. We say thank you and we um, pray for your protection and your safety as you um, put your uh, Put yourselves in harm's way in some regard to continue to keep things normal for our country and our communities. And of course, we lift up doctors and nurses this morning as, um, as they continue to be in, um, in the places with the people who are most affected, taking care of them, providing essential care, and um, saving lives. So we say thank you and we lift them up in prayer as well. So let's pray together. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for um, another day, for another day that we can uh, come together through um, technology to worship, to be gathered as a congregation and as an extended congregation through, um, through the means of technology. And um, during this time of uh, altered schedules and um, stay-at-home orders and those things, we Give thanks that we continue to be able to worship and to feel your presence, to hear familiar songs and reflect on scripture. Um, and I pray this morning that this time uh, would provide a sense of comfort and peace for those who are tuning in uh, from wherever they are. And God, we lift up all of the prayer requests that I just mentioned and those um, that weren't shared this morning that are on people's hearts that, um, that people are struggling with. Uh, both silently and publicly, we pray um, that you would be there with them, that you would continue to show up in their lives to, um, to provide that peace, that comfort, um, and that hope for them. 
And so, God, this morning, as we continue in this time of worship, um, I pray that the words of Scripture, um, the songs and the lyrics from our hymns, uh, the, the liturgy of, um, of our faith and, and all that we do to worship you would be pleasing for you, uh, first and foremost, but would also challenge us to um, become uh, better followers of your son Jesus and to, to imitate um, his service to the world um, and his love for others. And so we pray this in the way that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So now if you'll join us in singing, uh, crown him with many crowns, and those lyrics will be on your screen. So if you've uh, got your Bible with you, um, you can turn to John chapter 20, um, and we're going to read verses 19 through 31. So hear the word of God. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then, did, then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, or Didymus, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. 
And this is the word of God for the people of God. And we say, thanks be to God. Let's pray. God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be acceptable unto you, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Do you remember the movie The Sandlot? Um, If you have not seen that movie, it's a classic, and so you should do yourself a favor, and immediately after this is over, if you haven't seen it, you should go and watch it. Uh, But there's a scene in the movie when Hamilton Porter uh, calls a a home run shot um, to center field, just like Babe Ruth did, and um, he hits the ball over the fence. And Benny, the team captain, is furious because now they can't play no more. And um, Smalls, who is new to the team, tries to remedy the situation. He's, he's just going to hop the fence and, and get the ball back, and then they can start playing again. And so he starts to, to try and climb the fence, and, and the whole baseball team rushes him in this mad dash and pulls him off the fence and says, no, 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 you can't. Uh, you can't do that. You can't go over there and get the ball. And he, um, he's confused and he says, why, why not? And they say it's because of a giant kid-eating guard dog called the Beast. And so, of course, Smalls doesn't believe the kids. He thinks that um, they're playing a trick on him. So they uh, call for a sleepover in the treehouse that, that sits on the edge of the fence of their, um, their Sandlot baseball field. And Squints tells the story of Mr. Myrtle who owns the, the yard and of this dog called the Beast who, um, who, is, uh, who watches over this yard. And, and Small still doesn't believe. So they tell him to quietly uh, walk over to the window and to stick his head out and to look down and um, he does this, and he, he sees and hears this beast, this dog, um, and now finally he knows the truth that they're telling him, and he believes. So Smalls is like Thomas in this scripture. He needed to see and experience um, this for himself. And I think a lot of us are like Smalls too, and like Thomas, for that matter, most of us, by our nature, are curious and skeptical people. We, we love evidence. We like to touch and see and hear and experience things firsthand, which means we don't always take things at face value. So when, um, when Thomas hears from the other disciples just on a, um, of their account that Jesus um, visited them, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't believe it. He doesn't take them at face value. But notice in this passage that when Jesus does come and Thomas is there, um, he allows Thomas to touch and see his, uh, his nail marks and his wound in his side. And he encourages Thomas to believe and not doubt. Even when Thomas doubted, Even when Thomas had his doubts, Jesus showed up for Thomas and encouraged him. And you could insert yourself into that sentence. Even when John doubted, or even when Amy doubted, or even when you or whoever had their doubts, Jesus shows up for us as well and encourages us to believe. So maybe you don't relate strongly to Thomas from this passage, and and that's great. That means that um, you don't maybe struggle as much with doubts as as I do. Um, However, I think think we can all relate to the first part of the scripture that talks about the disciples who were locked in a room and afraid, uh, especially right now. Um, Amen? So again, in this second week of Easter, where we're hearing again the account from the gospel, I think we do have a unique opportunity to really um, step into the shoes of the disciples to hear this in a um, in a way that we might relate more to this week and um, to to hear these accounts and stories um, 
and take them in slower and more carefully than we might if we uh, were in a business-as-usual time. In this passage from John, we enter into a scene where the disciples are, um, it's before Jesus has, has appeared to them. And they're gathered in this room with the door locked. They're not sure what to do. Um, they're afraid because they were Jesus's um, best known associates and friends. So they're worried that they might also be arrested and, and put on trial and, and possibly killed for their association with him. So, so they're hiding out. The room is locked. They are scared and confused and really unsure of, of what to do next or um, really how they should be faithful during this time. And in the midst of all their fear and confusion and uncertainty, Jesus shows up. It says that he came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. You could insert yourself into that sentence as well. In the middle of your uncertainty or in the middle of, of my confusion, in the middle of, of all of our collective fear, Jesus shows up. Now there is a teaching moment in this passage, there typically is when it comes to Jesus, and I think like a good coach, when, when someone on the team needs a little bit extra help learning something or um, getting better, a good coach takes them aside and, and makes an example for the whole team so that the coach can show them um, how to learn this skill so that they can all progress and get better um, together. So Jesus says to Thomas, look, did, did you only believe uh, that I was who I said I was and that I had risen and I was in front of you because you could touch and, and see my wounds? And he, he just goes on to encourage him and says, look, those, those who believe without having to see, those are the ones who going forward now um, are going to be blessed. And it's encouragement for those disciples gathered there, um, but also for generations to come and also for all of us. So earlier in this passage, Jesus tells the disciples that, that just like the Father had sent him, now he was sending the disciples. He was sending them out into the world to share this message of good news with other people, um, that he was risen, um, and that they are supposed to go and spread this movement of life and hope to all that would listen that in, in all of the places of the world. And Jesus knew that the people that the disciples would go to wouldn't be able to have this firsthand encounter and see the body and touch the wounds, um, but that it was still imperative that they needed to believe. For us as well, we are called to carry on this movement in our time of um, this movement of, of life and of hope. Uh, and we're called also to believe in this account of the resurrection and to become followers of the risen Jesus. So how might we be faithful during this time? I think if we look at this passage from Scripture, and I would invite you to um, read it again and reflect with who you're with or reflect on it on your own, um, I think that we can find a few helpful things um, for us to be faithful disciples during uh, these times. So the first thing is that the disciples were together, and it doesn't say what they were doing in that room, but I imagine it looked very similar to what we're doing right now minus um, the technology to view um, other people. But I imagine that they were singing and praying, reflecting on scripture, eating and drinking, and spending time together around a table, or in our case, maybe around um, a living room or a den or a TV room. So I think that I would encourage you to show up for others, like Jesus showed up for the disciples in this account, to be present with who you are with and be aware of who you're not with and reach out to them. Um, and so whether that's in person or digitally, to be together, to offer peace, to reconcile your differences, 
to forgive sins, to pray and laugh and cry, to be gathered together with who you are with in those rooms um, in your houses. The second thing, I think, is that like Thomas, I would encourage you to ask faithful questions, to share your doubt, because unless we do that, we'll never grow. We'll never get better as disciples of Jesus Christ. And um, it, it is, it's naive to think that we'll ever not have doubts or questions or have um, uncertainty about things that we hear or read. Um, and so share those things. It's okay to share those things because when we look at how Jesus treated Thomas, he didn't, um, he didn't shut him down. He met Thomas right where he was with, with what he needed. He let Thomas touch the, the nail marks and to touch the wound in his side. He was there for him and he taught him um, and all of the other disciples a valuable lesson in that moment. The third thing is to pray for guidance from the Holy Spirit. So as followers of Jesus Christ and, and those of us who have been baptized, um, and all of us, we have received the, the Spirit of God. It says in John fourteen twenty six that um, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I have said. So in this passage, we see that Jesus um, kind of gives the Holy Spirit. He breathes on his disciples and, and gives them this Holy Spirit. And the word advocate from that passage from John can also be translated as comforter, helper, encourager, and counselor. So I would encourage you to pray for that spirit to work in your moments of uncertainty and doubt and fear especially when you most need an encourager or an advocate or a helper. And the fourth thing is lean on Scripture. At the end of this passage, it says that these things that Jesus said and did were written down so that you would believe or continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. So through the scriptures, we are reminded that Jesus shows up for us and that in Jesus, we have life and peace and hope. Even when we fear and even when we doubt. And so this morning for that, we say thanks be to God. Amen. So this morning, um, we just have a few announcements. Um, like I mentioned, this will be the new home of our virtual worship services, this Facebook page. We will also continue to update our personal page as people continue to transition over, and also we will post on um, our YouTube channel uh, the, the finished um, service so that if you don't have a Facebook account, you can still uh, get um, or watch the service on our YouTube. Also, if you'd like to be um, part of our email list where we send out more information, um, send us a message on Facebook or um, reach out uh, on our website. It's Glendale Heights UMC or Glendale Heights, yeah, UMC.org, uh, excuse me. And, um, and we, we would love if you, um, if you haven't been a part of our congregation to be in touch with you. Uh, as we sort of explore this new frontier of what it might mean to have um, people worship with us regularly, but only online, um, we'd like to explore that with you and to be your church um, as we continue to do that. Also, um, if, you, if you do live in Durham and you have been a part of this church in the past or um, you're sort of connected to this church through your friends, we would also like to invite you to come and be a part of of Glendale Heights here when we can worship back in person. And um, if you would like to meet with me or have a phone call at some point, um, I'm, I'm very available to do that. Or you can talk to any of our, um, any of the people who are part of our congregation. Um, but we would like you to know that you are always welcome um, here at Glendale Heights. 
So for our, um, for our continued worship right now, we will be planning uh, to worship only online through the middle of May, and we're continuing to watch for updates from our local and state government and the national government, as well as um, the bishop of our conference who provides um, leadership for best practices for churches. But we will be online until further notice. Um, also, Emily, my wife, is uh, due to have our baby girl on May 20th, and we do have um, contingency plans for, uh, for worship if, um, if I'm not able to be here. Uh, Amy Davis has offered one Sunday to do a hymn sing with scripture, um, so that'll, that'll probably be option one. Tom Simmons, our lay leader, is also prepared to... Um, to do a, a similar thing to what I'm doing now, as well as um, Bob Fogel's song. So we, we have those measures in place um, as, as we move forward, Emily and I, into this new exciting uh, season of being parents. Also, um, just on a, a note, so this week is reading week and the next week is finals. So I will be uh, busy these next two weeks, finishing up this first year of seminary but I'm also available, so please don't hesitate to reach out via phone, call, or um, text or email. Uh, I want to make sure that you know I am going to be busy, but I am available uh, should something important arise. Um, and I, I think that is all of the announcements that I have. Oh, um, the last one is that we are in the process of finalizing our lease agreement with the Durham Community Preschool, so we're so excited um, that they'll be, um, they'll be joining us. Um, we're finalizing that lease, and, and they'll be occupying um, our basement, and they will uh, be hopefully working on it as soon as possible, um, and we're working on things, and we hope that they're... Um, their school year won't be affected by this, but we are excited to welcome them to, um, to be a part of Glendale Heights and to be in partnership with them in the fall. So that is, that is still moving along, uh, even though um, we're not able to meet and be together right now. We wanted to update you on that. So that's all the announcements I have. Please um, feel free to send us any questions, comments, concerns, feedback. All of those things are good. Um, share this on your Facebook page. Share this message with people. Um, share our new Facebook page with people so that they can come and be a part of our congregation. Um, continue to reach out and, um, and be in communication with people. Uh, continue practicing social distancing, and, and we hope... Uh, that we will be able to meet in person um, soon, but we're so glad that you did tune in with us this morning to worship uh, online. And so hear this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. So go in peace this morning to love and serve with those who you're with um, and with those who you'll reach out to um, on technology this week. So thanks for joining us and, and hear this postlude um, as, we, as we go into our, our weeks. God bless.